Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Drams on deck. And today I'm looking for something that's going to really, really tickle my fancy. That's really going to get my palate going. That's really going to make me happy. Today I want to be happy. I got some Moscow. I got some scotch. I got some rums, cognacs. What am I going to tell I got some Japanese. I already did all y'all. Where we at? Where we at? Bring it up here. What I'm in the mood for? Did you? Did you? Did you? Moscatel, did you? Oh, wait a minute. I didn't do you. The Manzanilla. The Cavalon Manzanilla Soloist. This is one of my big boys. Wow. Let me pull you out, get you where you need to be. Ba bow. What we got here? Cavalon, you see it on him, Manzanilla. Casket fresh. Let me just pop it down like this. Sometimes a bottle want to pop out and play games. We ain't got time for that. We really don't. So let me pop this thing open. Bow. You see it. You see it. Casket fresh is what I say. Look at this. Look at this. Cavalon whiskey single cast strength. Manzanilla sherry cast. You see the notes. You see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 57.1%. It is a jewel. Casket fresh. Look at this. What is this, velvet? So this is a very nice, tutting, nice little crafted box. See the hinges on it? I like it. Closed. And this is open. And then you pop it up. This is the notes for the manzanilla. You would still shot and look at it, but that's kind of what they're talking about right here. Tasting notes. You know, said balanced body, slightly salty. You see it. Sweetness, vanilla flavors, orange, melon, mint, etc. etc. So uh, we're gonna get dive on to it. Right? That you see what time it is. The Cavalon Manzanella for review. Let's go. Let's go. Trams on deck. You see what time it is today. We got a special guest in the building. And when I say special guest, usually that equates to uh, something that is rare, very good, or very expensive. In my opinion, it kind of checks the box on at least two of those. Okay, you'll see in just a second. But this one right here is the Cavalon Manzanilla Soloist. This right here is not cheap by any means. I actually got this box a few years ago when I was in California. I was living in Southern California, just north. And I got this actually at a, a spot called Texas Wines and Spirits. It was located in Carlsbad, California, which is kind of like north of San Diego. I, got, I talked to a private uh, owner, he, he, you know, a guy who owned the shop. He worked a deal for me. I uh, actually I reviewed the Manzanella up here as well. So in my, ca my catalog, if you go, you'll see a box that looks exactly like this. It has a purple stripe that says, Mos I'm sorry, Moscatel. So this is the Moscatel. This is the Manzanella. I, I reviewed that already. This is the Manzanella. Uh, they, he, bought, he gave it to me for a price. I think I, I paid ballpark around $450 for this. And I know that's a lot of money. Uh, but this is, this is at, during that time, these were bottles that I was stalking for a while. Um, I was really in my Cavalon fanboy mode, and I was really digging it. Um, long story short, this, right now, currently, this bottle sells at certain places for $700. So $6.99 $6 or $700. Um, it ranges. So, you know, usually, if I think the cheapest I can recall seeing this, maybe at a total of wines, it was like maybe $450. So in a ballpark, it ranges from four the mid fours to all the way up to seven hundred dollars. I got it for like I said, four fifty tax free out the door. Uh, and then he then he threw in a, another bottle as like a throw in, um, like I think it was like a cheaper bourbon or something like that. He threw in, but he he kind of worked with me. I'm military, he liked me, so he kind of worked with me and will and deal. So if you ever go to Texas Wines and Spears, the owner's name is Ryan, and tell him Jason or Drams on Deck, uh, you know me. He'll hook you up if you, if he happens to be in the store that day. But by and large, uh, like I said, this this bottle right here, like I said, I was really stalking these. I just like you know, Cavalier has won several awards left and right. 
Um, if you don't know, manzanilla is actually a, a sherry. It's like a, a type of pheno sherry. It's like so it's, it's a drier sherry, so to speak. Uh, drying in a pale sherry. Um, this bottle right here, um, I'm looking at the bottle. But it was bought in uh, April 30th, 2016, if you care to know. And the bottle uh, right here, the bottle number on here, uh, the mess button, it's uh, bottle number 188-478. Uh, so this was bottled at 57.1%. Uh, so there are some, you could find some uh, manzanilla uh, soloists that have a different ABV, uh, depending upon the release. So mine is 57.1. It was bottled in uh, April 2016. And that's, I just said my bottle number. So anyway, uh, manzanilla, like I said, it's, it has more of a salty character to it. It is a drier uh, sherry, drier sh pale sherry. Uh, more in, in the in the pheno, uh, pheno line. So there's different types of sherry. You know, you obviously the most common ones you you see in uh, whiskeys is uh, Oloroso and PX. Those are usually the, the two of the ones you see the most. So anyway, they're different. So this is the Manzanilla. So um, I'm gonna do this review, and I understand going in like, hey, everybody's not gonna be this review is probably not gonna be for everybody because there's certain people who would never ever pay. You know, for $100 and up for any spirit, no matter what. Understandable, I get it. Not trying to talk you into it by any means, but just trying to educate people who may be curious or who may want to know what a $450 bottle or a $700 bottle tastes like, is it worth it, et cetera, et cetera. And there are some people, which who are probably the minority, who don't mind spending this. They probably may have a whole collection of these, you know. So anyway, it's, it's for everybody, but more likely there's going to be only a few sector who probably would be willing to spend the kind of money to get this bottle. Now, I'm going to tell you straight up, if for $700, I wouldn't have pop, pay, paid for that. You know, I got it. Like I said, I knew it ranges anywhere. Because back then, I think, you know, it was around 600 he, The guy sold it for $600 in the store, but he knocked it down to 450 tax-free. So he dropped $150 and, and took out the tax. So I, I was like, I had to jump on it because I was, you know, because I was stalking these solo lines for a while. Um, but anyway... Um, like I said, you know, at retail, I wouldn't pay no six, seven hundred dollars for it. Absolutely not. But I got, a, I got a deal on it, so I just, I just, you know, went with it. Um, so anyway, as always, we gonna nose it, we gonna taste it, we gonna score it. And just so you know, these is not a stated. This is Taiwanese whiskey, so this is in Thailand. Uh, they and obviously the the weather over there is very hot, very hot climatic, very it's like a tropical climate. So because of that. The aging process is going to be further expedient because, you know, unlike maybe in Scotland where you have, a, you know, it's very more coastal, more cooler uh, uh, temperatures, hotter climates, same way in certain uh, whiskey. If you find in Texas, like just using that, for example, you know, the climate's going to be a, a little bit hotter in Texas than it is in, in uh, Colorado whiskeys, for example, or even Kentucky whiskey. So the climate uh, can, can play an effect on the maturation process, not, not age stated. Um, but like I said, uh, manzanella is, like I said, it's not a easily uh, available share that you see commonly in spirits or in whiskey. It's not super common. You see some, but it's, it's not, you know, super common. So I just definitely want to jump on this. So anyway, like I said, I already did the Moscatel. Now I'm doing his brother, the manzanella. So let's jump on his nose and let's see what we got. Before I do that, though, it's a medium amber color. It's a nice golden medium amber color. Shaking it around, it's not a lot. Of, it's, it's not a lot of legs on here, so it's at least on the glass. It's not super oily on the glass. On the nose, <sighs> okay. I just said it's fifty-seven percent, so that nose has got a little bite to it, but it's okay though. I like that though. Right off the bat, I'm picking up a nice soft sherry nose. <sighs> Pick up some like little brine character. Peaches, peppers, like a nutmeg and a cinnamon, ginger, dates. It has a high ABV too, so you pick up a you know if you if you get deep into it, you're gonna you gonna pick up a little a high you know alcohol smell on it as well. But it's okay though, I like that. But it has like a diverse palate though, you know what I'm saying? Sherry, dates. Peppers, <sighs> yeah, ginger, raisins, not bad at all, not bad. 
Let's try his palate and let's see what a $500 whiskey tastes like. Cheers. Letting it roll down. All right, now. Talking to me. Mm. As always, I like to take two sips. It's a high BV. Believe it or not, the sips, very, very cruise control like. Not overly high. But I'm going to take another sip. First, saturate my palate because right now my tongue is tingling. So we'll take one more quick sip to kind of saturate the palate. I can dive deeper to the notes. One more. Wow. So I'm going to put some water in there. So I'm talking through these, these notes. I'm going to let it I'm gonna put some water in there see if it opens it up. But what I got right here, it's a nice velvety sweet sherry. But it has a dry finish. It's not, you know, it's not like if you ever had a, a very pungent, thick Oloroso, this doesn't taste the same. It has more dry, but it's still there though. It's like a dry, but it, it like a dry sherry, but it also pick up some saltiness on this, but in a good way. Some brine, some salt on here, caramel, dates, honey. Nice. It's very nice. Um, it's very good. And believe it or not, for 57%, it drinks pretty, you know, um, pretty good. I, I wouldn't think it was 57% if you didn't tell me. I mean, don't get me wrong, it has, it has a little oomph to it. When I say oomph, I mean, you can feel some heat, but it's not like burning hot. And, when I, when, and let me clarify when I say it's not burning hot. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting that put in the context of someone who's kind of like a, uh, someone who drinks neat, neat spirits or high proof. If you're someone who has experience drinking neat, like drinking just straight whiskey and, you, and some are higher proof, meaning 50% or higher, this is this shouldn't really have, you shouldn't have a problem with this at all. Now, if you're someone who always mixes your spirits or drinks wine or, or you know if, you, if you're not used to drinking uh, straight whiskey, let alone cash strain, this may be very hot for you. So I'm only talking about from a seasoned, experienced, neat sipper um, whiskey person. This this is like you know it's not going to burn you or anything like that. If you're if you're a novice, someone who you know mixes whiskeys or mi mix doesn't drink straight, then it's probably going to be you know be a little hot for you. But you know. Um, like I said, saltiness, that dry sherry, dates. I like the brine, saltiness, caramel. I pick, I'm, I get all that on here. And it's kind of buttery too. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, I wouldn't say super oily, but it tastes very soft and buttery and kind of velvety. When I roll around on my tongue, it tastes kind of velvety. It's kind of silky, kind of silky texture. The texture of it is kind of silky on the palate. I like that. I like the texture of it, if that makes sense. Um, but good stuff. Let me take one more sip. I'm going to take another sip here. This is with water. So I took a, a generous portion of water on this to see if it opens it up more. Like I said, it's 57%, so it could take some. So let me, uh, it's been sitting for a few minutes. I'm going to take a quick nose and sip and tell you what I got. The nose right here is very similar. I'm not picking up anything major on it. I will say the one thing I do is pick up more brine character, more of that saltiness. But all in all, I still pick up the dates, caramel, on a little bit on the nose. Saltiness is kind of hikes up a bit, and you still taste a little bit of that sherry. See what it tastes like on the palate with water.
Wow. I put water in it. Not only does it bring out the saltiness on the nose, it brings it out on the palate. Tastes like some salty caramel candy. The caramel and the saltiness really step up in the forefront with the water. You know, without the water, I get the, you know, the ginger. I get the, you know, I still get the saltiness, the brine, I should say, the caramel. But then you get the, you know, like I said, the dry uh, sherry and the dates. But when I put water in there, the, the sherry and the, and the dates kind of take a, a back seat. And what jumps forward is that saucy, that brine, that caramel candy kind of like uh, flavor steps forward. So, it's, it, you know, those flavors step forward. And so for me, you know, it's, it's, it's still good, but I think I probably like it without the water slightly just because I get the, I still get the dates and the sherry. So to me, the you know, like I said, keep in mind, this is my palate and I've been drinking other stuff today too. So um, tomorrow I may, or maybe the next week I may try it with, with or without water. I may have a slightly, slightly different variation or take on it. But today my take on it is still good with or without water. Do it based upon your taste profile, but for my taste profile for today, right now, I slightly like it without water, but it's still good regardless. But what takes the forefront, like I said, is the is the, that caramel candy, that salty, that brine character really shines more so with the water. Still good all in all. Um, good stuff. I'm gonna take one more quick sip. And I'm gonna give you my final thoughts. I'm gonna score this for you. Good stuff. Um, more the same. Brian dates that caramel car car caramel character. Now I have rate this one of a ten. Ten being the best for me. Dreams on deck. If I rate this, I give this an eight seven five. Eight and three quarters out of a ten, which is a very good score. I like this. this. is a solid dram. Actually, you know, I, I, when I rated his brother, which is the Moscatel, which is right above me, um, I'll just take a quick grab just so you, in case you're curious. So this is what that looks like. I reviewed that a while ago. This was a higher rating. So I still stand by that. I think this Moscatel is better than the Manzanilla, but that's just a personal preference, you know. Um, both good, but this is better in my opinion. More sherry, uh, just more, it's, it's better, slightly better in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, very good stuff. Um, 875 out of a 10. This, I remember this was over a nine when I reviewed it, like maybe almost two years ago. Uh, but anyway, good stuff. Um, do I think that the, do I think they're both worth the price point? Let's just, you know, like I said, they go anywhere from 450 to $700. Do I think it's worth the price point? I do not. They're both very good. Don't get me wrong. But if you ask me would I buy, even if I got at the same price I got these. So if, they, if, if, if the guy said, hey, I got some more of these. Well, you want another one for $450? Because like I said, online, a lot of spots, they're going for $700. So even if he gave me a $250 discount, I still wouldn't buy it again. I, I like them both. Are they worth the price point? Negative. They're not good. There's things that I've had as far better than the, both of these. I ain't going to say far better, but better because I did give this a nine. So uh, there are things that I like just as good, if not better, that, that don't cost as much. You know, if I'm, if I'm just being honest, like, like right here, I'm just using this for example. Uh, this right here, this has PX Sherry. To me, I gave this the same rating or maybe slightly better than this one. So they're both, I gave, the ratings are both the same. This is around $200, $220, right, for this when uh, Drone Department 21, this is pretty much the same rating. So this is like $200, well over $200 less than this one, or both of them. Like I said, and that's and keep in mind, this is the short end. So if, I, if, it, if I had to pay, like, we'll just say $600, you know, this is $220, this is $600, I gave them both the same range. So that, that's the reason why I'm saying that I wouldn't do it again. Even the even the younger version, the Glenn Jordan 18 year, I like that just as much as almost as any of these. You know, pretty much in the same ballpark. So that's why I would say no. I mean, I reviewed the Red Breast 27. That's a, it's a different taste profile. I like that 
well, it's the same price, so probably a bad analogy. But long story short, there's other spirits that I've tried in the 150 200 ballpark that I like just as much, if not more, than these. Um, so that's why I would say what I said. Um, you know, um, I, I like these both. They're both solid drams. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, if, if it was up to me, what I, you know, like I said, if it's your money, you do what you choose. But for me, I wouldn't buy it again. Um, they're very good. I think they're overpriced. A non-age statement, 500 and some dollar whiskeys. Don't get me wrong. The presentation is phenomenal. I love the box, the presentation, the bottle. Phenomenal presentation. Very good dram. But just my personal opinion, I don't think they're worth 500 plus dollars. I just don't. Would I buy it again? No, I would not buy it again. Negative. The other drums I can get that's just that's just as good, if not better, for for less than half the price. That's why that's why I feel the way I feel. If I just base them on on their price alone, I would say cool. But because it's not on the price alone, I you know I I would say you know maybe save yourself uh, three hundred dollars and get something else that's that's you know cheaper. That's just my personal opinion. But hopefully you got someone to review. Like I said, there's not many people that's willing, even willing to, to spend that kind of money. So only, I'm talking to a small few. But nevertheless, that's just my opinion. Uh, so all, it's just so if you if you curious to know what damn what the Cavanaugh tastes like, it's good. Like I said, you get the saltiness, the brine, the dates, just dry sherry, etc. It's very good stuff. I like it. It drinks very good for 57. percent But does it drink good enough for 500 dollars? If you see it in, in uh, Total Wines for sitting out there for 500 dollars, do, do I think do I think it's worth it? No. I would say pass it up. But this is my person, if you ask my opinion. But like I said, five hundred dollars might be nothing to some people. So it's you know do do what you choose, you know. But uh, but yeah, good stuff. But everything just because something priced very high and looks very rare and has the bows and ribbons and ties on it like this, the metal ties, doesn't mean that it's worth whatever you know price point that it may be. I'm only and, I, and that's several whiskeys, but I'm only talking about this one right here. Good stuff, but not worth five hundred plus dollars. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Likes and subscribes are for free, y'all. Um, the more I, likes I get, the more algorithm. I can see my face more. I, I get more recommended um, for, to, for new up-and-coming people or whiskey connoisseurs who would like to see different videos. So this is a way, it's a small way it's just to help me out and help the channel out. Also, I have a cash app, Patreon, if you do help choose support. Everything I do is independent. Everything is all out of my dime. I greatly appreciate the, the support. Please hit me in the comment blocks, too. I love interacting with you guys. That makes it fun. You guys are my drinking buddies. So please, please hit me in the comment description box. Let me know your opinions of Cavalon. It doesn't necessarily have to be the soloist version. It hasn't. It doesn't have to be this one or this one or you know. But just let me know if you ever had any experience whatsoever with Cavalon. I like to know what your thoughts are. What your what your opinions are of Cavalon, and especially if you had these. Let me know if you thought it was worth it or what you thought your of, of these particular expressions. If you if you were one of the people who have actually had this before. I'm curious to know the people who think that, you know, there's definitely just like, you know, it's part of a community. So definitely the people put their thoughts and opinions out there. And that's just kind of how we, uh, you know, help each other out. So anyway, man, hopefully, you got, like I said, hope you enjoyed the review, man. So signing out, man, I got more hot reviews coming your way. So please stay tuned. Signing out. Drams on deck. Yes, sir. Please stay safe out there.